Notice of motion number one, standing in the name of Senator Xenophon for the reference of a matter to a committee. Senator Xenophon. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I move the motion standing in my name and I, this, uh, this relates to matters that uh, uh, were in part dealt with last week. So we're back again uh, dealing with the concerns that have been put to me by many Australians who are former members of the Church of Scientology. Many these individuals who have told terrible stories, uh, horrendous abuse, and the intent of last week's motion, as is the intent of this week's motion, is to have an inquiry where people can have their say. And the reason why people need to have their say is that they need a voice. They need an opportunity to speak out safely. They need an opportunity to speak out safely in the context of a Senate committee where consideration can be given to whether we need to change the law so that people such as those that have approached me can get the protection that they deserve as Australian citizens. The issues are, Mr Acting Deputy President, last week, or initially, several months ago when I spoke out about this organisation, which I see as a dangerous organisation that engages in criminal activity on a systematic basis, I put up a motion that there be a specific look at the Church of Scientology. It was put to me privately by a number of colleagues, and I won't name them because what they put to me I think was very much in good faith and with goodwill, that it would be more appropriate that there be a broader discussion about the tax-free status of charities and religious organisations as to whether a public benefit test should apply, as is the case in, as is the, case in the United Kingdom a test that's been in place for many years, a test uh, that has stood, this te that has stood um, uh, rigorous examination, and a test that looks at the public benefit an organisation does balanced by the harms of that organisation. And it's interesting to note that in the United Kingdom, the, uh, the Church of Scientology has, has had difficulty in getting a tax-free status uh, because of their activities, because of the harm caused and because of the nature of their organisation, the way it is structured. And I think the secrecy has something to do with that to a considerable degree. But that was not successful, Mr Acting Deputy President, because it was deemed to be too broad an inquiry. And I accept fully that those senators who spoke to me privately, thinking that this was a way forward, uh, they did so in good faith. So I'm back to square one in a sense by looking at a specific inquiry into this organisation, a specific inquiry that does not, and I emphasise does not, will, will not inquire into the validity or otherwise of the belief systems of the Church of Scientology and any associated entities. This is not about religious belief. This is not about belief systems. This is about behaviour. There is a fundamental difference. I do not want to stand in the way, and nor should this place stand in the way of questioning a person's belief systems. But when we have mounting evidence of cases of abuse, of cases where this organisation says it is above the law because of its own court system, a parallel court system it seems to the laws of this nation, then I think that's worth looking at. I think it's worth looking at because no one should be above the law, no organisation should be above the law. Now this motion uh, follows the very extensive media reports uh, we saw in, on Four Corners last week about this organisation. The Sunday night program on Channel 7 on the 7 Network uh, looked at this, uh, the Church of Scientology and it's important that we look at these allegations of abuse against made uh, against em employees, volunteers and followers, including ex-employees, ex-volunteers and ex-followers of the Church of Scientology and all its associated entities in terms of a number of very disturbing practices, including coerced abortions, unsafe occupational health and safety practices, uh, unconscionable misleading and deceptive conduct in the context of goods and services provided and charged for by the Church of Scientology and other associated entities, and the harassment of followers and ex-followers. These are matters 
that ought to be looked at in the context of a Senate inquiry because a Senate inquiry can make recommendations, can hear the evidence and can I emphasise, note, there will be ample opportunity for the organisation itself, for the Church of Scientology, to give its evidence fairly before any inquiry so that those former followers, the victims of the Church, can give their evidence, they can be questioned, and as can the Church of Scientology. But we need to look at the adequacy of the model criminal code. We need to look at whether there should be a definition of psychological harm in our laws and whether our current laws, for instance, in relation to stalking and harassment are adequate. I say they are not because the evidence that's been put to me by many followers, ex-followers of the Church of Scientology, is that the modus operandi of this organisation is that they will uh, have numerous people, numerous operatives from this organisation harassing people. And the way our current stalking and anti-stalking and uh, harassment laws work right now, they're inadequate because it relates to one individual harassing someone on a continual basis, on, on a repeated basis. But where you have a situation where you have a number of individuals from the same organisation on a daily basis in some occasions, day in, day out, harassing people, it's very hard to get a conviction under our current laws because there are different individuals involved in doing this, not one organisation. That is a flaw in the current law and that's something that I believe the Senate inquiry could look at. It also needs to look at the adequacy of current consumer protection laws in respect to the goods and services provided by this organisation and the tactics they employ, and I say they are unconscionable tactics in terms of getting people to part with their money or to sign over their homes with incredible high pressure tactics for people to lose their homes for this so-called church. These are matters that I think need to be the subject of scrutiny and do we need stronger trade practices laws, laws that relate to this sort of unconscionable behaviour because it seems that our current laws are too narrow. And if somebody wants to take on the church, this is an organisation that has literally spent tens of millions of dollars in its annual budget in years gone by to take on people, to sue them for defamation, to uh, basically, um, in many cases, render people bankrupt because they cannot afford the deep pockets, that taking on the very deep pockets of the Church of Scientology in litigation. There is no access to justice for these individuals when you're talking about an organisation that can spend millions and millions of dollars on any one piece of litigation. There's also an issue, Mr Acting Deputy President, about the adequacy of current occupational health and safety laws as they apply to those followers, those who have worked, who have volunteered for this organisation. So many people have come forward and told me about their work, that, that they were working 60, 70, 80 hours a week and getting paid $30, $40 a week, uh, less than that. And I was told this morning, um, outside the front of Parliament House, of uh, if you're really lucky, you could get $50 a week. Now, here we have a government which has put up legislation in terms of fair work, repealing work choices, and I commend the government for doing that. But here are some horrendous stories of occupational health and safety breaches, industrial relations breaches, which I believe our current laws don't adequately cover. And that concerns me deeply. I just wanted to read, Mr Acting Deputy President, a statement that was made to the media yesterday. I want to read it on the record, because I think it's important to do so, from Jeanette Lang, who very courageously and bravely spoke out about her experiences in the Church of Scientology and I um, want to read in full what she said to the media, to the public yesterday because it took a lot of courage on her part and uh, I'm, very, I'm very grateful that she's done so. And her statement goes as follows.